Hello and uh, welcome to Stargate Edinburgh Tours and uh, my channel Outshore Radio. I wanted to say something about the trend we've got in paranormal tours, paranormal television, paranormal programs, ghost teams, like little SWAT teams full of all the gear, you know, they've got all the night sights and the night sensors and the night vision and night arrays, they've got the processing, they've got the apps, they've got the technology, they've got absolutely everything. But I think what they don't actually have is a clear perspective on what they're really doing. The big problem with planet Earth is that for millennia it has been infested with this, it has to be said, demonic scenario. We've got an opportunity here in the 21st century to see them for what they really are. But it's very difficult because you've got people saying, well, I'm from the Ashtar Command, I'm channeling Ambassador Zorg from the planet Zoo. Uh, but I'm from Arcturus, I'm channeling the Council of Nine. Got lots of great information for you. Which is just basically sums up, it just says, be good. Be good, be very, very good. And you never get a cure for cancer or the chemical formula for some amazing revolutionary technology or you never get anything like that written on the back of a dinner napkin. And if you look at the Council of Arcturus and all the issuances and the decrees and all these channelers and what have they really said? Nothing. I was horrified to see some, I think it was special forces or something, parachuting onto a floating UFO. Um, this was happening in Gorebridge, it's a Gorebridge UFO hotspot not very far from Edinburgh. Incredible events going on in this window area including like collusion with obviously establishment individuals seem to be having such a happy time with aliens that they're flying parachutes and things into them and uh, landing on platforms that could have been custom made for them um, with the lighting and the staging and you know what are they doing you see the thing is that this phenomenon that, that we've been interacting with over the millennia it's chameleon it changes shape it changes size, it changes scale, it changes its fashion and it was flying chariots or flying coaches, it's flying dirigibles, flying monoplanes, it's biplanes, it's, it's now jets, it, it just adapts to the social environment. The technology of the era, you'll see like Death Stars flying around the sun now and things like that. Death Stars, I mean huge enormous sized things. It didn't used to be enormous, it used to be nice and petite little um, Venusian aliens or Pleiadians or whatever from the planet Pleiades or star system Pleiades, you know, and they're blonde or they're whatever. And the thing is this, you see a wondrous diversity of form. Now, whoa, I'm not saying that the universe doesn't have a wondrous diversity of form. Of course it does. It's just that if we're really honest with ourselves and we have a good look at what we've been saying and doing on planet Earth, we do seem to have had it rather unlucky, don't you think? The fact that war after war, endless conflict, the same evil stuff that's been going on for millennia is still going on today. Might be a bit more high tech, but it's still it's still just as evil and it's still just happening. It doesn't sound like a planet that's really been contacted by by some federation. The problem is with the demonic reality that we're faced with, is that the, the demons lie. I mean, that's what they do. That what do you do for a living? I'm a demon. Well, what do I do? A lie. I tell lies all the time. And they deceive and they use deceptions and holograms and the appearance of this and the appearance of that to get us at a more substantial level. I mean, for instance, we've known for millennia in these stories, folk tales, that these demons, the djinn, the archons, the, the greys, the fairies, the pixies or whatever, they, they abduct. They abduct children. They abduct people and they abduct artifacts as well from your house. But they abduct things. It's in the folklore. All the Scottish folklore uh, Campbell, Banks, Carmichael, Kirk. It doesn't say that there are good guys and bad guys. There are nice. I was contacted by somebody who said, oh, there are, there are nice guys, there are the LMs, and there's the bad guys, there's the BMs or whatever. But the LMs are really good. It's just good demon, bad demon. You know, nowhere in the folklore does it say that, that people are happy with this reality that, that, that's with us. 
It's not that we're contacting the Federation or somebody from Star Trek has given us a bad time. It's, this is really a demonic reality. Now, how do we know that there are maybe not some good guys in silver suits, some bad guys in silver suits? I'll get to that in a minute. But this, this demonic reality has a history of having a good side and a bad side. In Celtic folklore, it's uh, the maiden, the mother, and the hag. The hag side of fairy means that Tinkerbell, that um, gossamer, pink tights and everything, can transform instantaneously into something very evil and hideous looking. Why do they do this sort of changes and mutations? Why do they scam us and confidence trick us into thinking that we've got a good thing going with them? Why do they do that? Perhaps why do they even produce UFOs that don't have any engines in them? Why do they give us the appearance of what we want all the time? What are they doing with us? Well, I mean, Nigel Kerner says it as well. They're mining our souls. They're stripping us of life essences. Whoa, whoa, how could they possibly be doing that? We can't see anything. Well, you know, supposing they're interdimensional, that they don't come from a federation from a distant star system three billion light years away. Supposing they just don't come from a federation of beings and that they're some United Nations of federations or United star systems. Or Supposing they don't actually adhere to that. Do you know why they won't? Why they don't have to? If they're specialised interdimensional life form, specialised in stripping solar energies, they don't even have to bother with technology. They don't need to manufacture hybrids, mutant hybrids. They don't need to create these things. Just as long as it gets them closer to our souls, if they can somehow create the connection with what we are intending or or get into our hopes, or hack into our hopes, hack into our fears, if they can somehow get to us with these representations, they can get into our soul essences. Pretty much, actually, one of my favourite analogies is the way that, you know, bees take pollen from flowers. Bees will come from a hive, their interdimensional matrix or hive or whatever, and they'll, and they'll strip the pollen off the flowers and they'll take it away and they'll make honey life essence to feed the hive basically well i think what we've got here is a case of some very maladapted creatures insectoids that have decided to specialize not in taking pollen from flowers but to take the intentions away from technological people that, that are extending and creative they're mining out creative individuals stripping them off their intentions by negating them and I think that's the way. If there's a mechanism, that's what it is. It'll be similar to nature. Very, very simple. Because we invest energy in intentions, don't we? We invest our energy. So there, there could be a sort of bleed as well if, if they strip the intentions of us. So they have to telepathically see what our intentions were. But that isn't much of a problem. I was a bit concerned. Dr. Jacobs is, I think a hero of mine, an all-time hero, because he, like no other doctor, has identified these beings as an alien threat. The only problem with Dr. Jacob's research is it's a, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, that, that he's looking for order and reason, and these beings are giving him the order and reason he expects to see. I think one of the things that struck me about one of Dr. Jacob's stories is the doorbell rings and a minder and a hybrid at the door and they come in and they sit in this room with this lady. Greys will do it, they'll come to your door, they'll impersonate, they'll impose their imposters, authority figures or weird, highly strange figures will come into your life and try and do things with you. That just happens with this whole phenomenon. But in this case we're talking about the hybrid, or alleged, as it alleged is the word, the alleged hybrid came and wouldn't sit back on the city because the hybrid was used to sitting on blocks in ships and they don't have any backs on them. I just thought, well, have you heard anything more ridiculous than that? Human beings probably see these things 
but I can't think of anything less sensible than a highly evolved intelligent creature not knowing to lean back on something that you can lean back on. I mean, it's just impossible that somebody would not want to lean back on a chair with a back on it. It's impossible. Being telepathic, they would know that it was safe to do so from billions of people that had chairs like that. So it's a phony environment, basically. The whole thing with the, with the hybrid reality, it was a phony reality. But it manifests a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that has to have something to do with Dr. Jacob there is thinking to himself, well, I'm looking into rational realities, I'll find a rational society. He finds a rational society. And there probably are these. these creatures probably do take apartments and all that, but not because they want to outbreed mankind. They're not into biological breeding as far as I can see, but they are into stripping the souls of mankind, though. I think they are into that. A gentleman called Nigel Kerner in his Song of the Greys points this out too. I find it very interesting that Nigel Kerner seems to be privy to, to that sort of information. He seems to have information about the nature of the cosmos that's not printed in any book written by, for instance, Stephen Hawking. Nigel Kerner's philosophy of the cosmos, his cosmology, is superior to anything that Hawkins would have written. Because it's based on chaos theory and Anyway, I digress, don't I? But I think what we're looking at in the nature, with the nature of this um, alien phenomenon is the fact that it changes and it mutates to manufacture our expectations. It manufactures our expectations so that it can get close to us, both physically and spiritually and mentally. And if it can get close to us, it can rip us off of our pollen or our intention or our the energy investment, the life essence we invest into our attachments, our intentions and our attachments. If it negates and twists and torments off our attachments, it's bled us off our life essence, which can be then harvested in the same way that a bee will take pollen out of a flower. Simple as that. Now, I don't believe for a minute that mankind is exposed to the wondrous diversity of a federation of anything. 82 creatures, 57 creatures, 100 creatures. I don't believe it. The reason is, is that Earth is contaminated with this life form, a life form that can make itself look like anything, that can manufacture anything, and is into imprisoning and stripping souls. Now, if you're an advanced civilization, the last thing you want to do is come anywhere near this place, because this stuff could follow you home. That wouldn't be good, would it? No way. If you look at, for instance, Project Serpo, it was alleged in Project Serpo that a team, an away team of America's finest scientists and all that, they all suited up and stepped through a wormhole in space and went to planet Serpo. Now, supposing they didn't actually get to planet Serpo, but they lived out their expectations in some interdimensional garage about five feet in relative space from where they'd stepped off. Maybe frozen in a, a vat of green goo or something, I mean. They were never going to know. The only way they would know when they came back was if they were bringing back artefacts and that these artefacts then dissolved or burst into flames. Or just, that would tell people that it all been a manufacture. There are artefacts of some abnormal time space. It's maybe manufactured just to contain these poor dudes who went through the the wormhole with Project Serpo. Anyway, um, I'm just saying that this whole situation of what we think of as greys, fairies, archons, jinn, demons, historical, ancient, alien thing is that they're just demonically behaving stuff. And if I was a real advanced civilization this place would be quarantined and I wouldn't come anywhere near it because we're contaminated. Our only hope as human beings, I think, is to pray that we travel upwards to heaven, not sideways down this empty relativity of our dimension. Heard of locusts 
pursuing us down the endless corridors of this maze in this dimension. No, we don't want that. We want to go into stealth mode and we want to travel upwards, a quantum leap into heaven by the power of love. That is our bestest hope. And I'm these days more into angelic intercessions and miracles and the incredible miracle of love and angels. I think in order to get away from the greys or the demons in this reality, we have to first recognise that we're dealing with what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with Arcturians from the planet Arctur. We're dealing with polymorphic, shape-shifting phenomenon. And it's all down to just one or two creatures. I think there's devils, the Anunnaki, the reptilians, and there's the greys, or the archons, the demons, the jinn, the fairies, or whatever. It's the same. It's the same phenomenon. It's been around here for a long time. Very little chance of real contact coming our way at the moment, anyway. Certainly not from sideways. I'd be looking upwards. Heaven, look towards heaven. And that, I think, is our best opportunity to take the love that's in our heart. Without the need of any spaceship or spacesuit, the love in our hearts will empower us forever to travel beyond these realms, beyond these shores, and beyond these dark, muddy densities to places of light-filled wonder. We don't need spaceships to travel there.